Roy's on a factory fact-finding mission, then he puts the Leica optics through their paces on a Portuguese Monteria. You know, that using good glasses is a, a fantastic advantage to have out in the field. Plus, Paul Childerly goes all Zorro on us with a lesson on how to caper Chinese water deer ready for the taxidermist. Shooting, stuffing, hunting YouTube Field Sports Channel News, welcome to Field Sports Britain. Well, I've been invited along as a guest to actually have a look around um, an optics factory. We're in the Leica factory and as an end consumer, you know, as a hunter, as somebody that uses these products, I am absolutely fascinated by what goes into it because you know, obviously when we buy optics, we, we always try and invest in the best possible optics that we can get. But what makes those products worth that investment? And that's something that I've always been fascinated by because obviously we all realise you know, that using good glasses is a, a fantastic advantage to have out in the field. And it's just unbelievable how many hours are involved in producing the, the, the finished product. We've started off today and we're in the, the milling side for the prisons and the prisons start off and come into here in their raw form and when you take into consideration that every single surface has got to be milled down to such a fine degree that on some of the prisons they don't actually use glue it actually holds on by forming a molecular bond when it's pushed against the other piece of glass because it is milled to such a, a molecular level so it really is just incredibly precise. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. Please, gentlemen, could I have your attention a minute? Um, I would like to introduce you a stick that the society, French society, first table stick to test during the Monteria day tomorrow. So with the left button you always choose and with the right button you enter. Then go to next step, ballistics. Choose EU5 or US5. Let's do it together. No, wow. Definitely feeling nervous this morning. <laughs> Just seen the, the, the dogs turn up and there's a, a proper motley lot of hounds there. So. <laughs> I, I hope they find stuff because I think otherwise they might eat us. <laughs> but no, we've got uh, we've got a good team of guys here, so uh, we've been having a, a lot of giggles. We've got a good friend, French contingent, and uh, of course the uh, the old Austrian as well. So um, yeah, <laughs> they've been they've been a good laugh. So yeah, I mean every, obviously everybody's uh, now set out. We've had the safety briefing, and it won't be long until we uh, get cracking on. So. The weather here is just amazing. For February, I think we're, we're out here in shirt sleeves. It's beautiful, so it won't be long, and uh, I think we're, we've been called up to load up, and away we go. So we've moved from the lenses 
and we've come over to the, the manufacturer of the, the magnesium body for the geo bit. The amount of hand processing and um, hand finishing that goes into all of the products here is, is just quite phenomenal and the attention to detail is just outstanding. We've now arrived at a hunting ground down in Portugal and as we were dropped off there were two stags just up on the hill. Uh, I couldn't get the rifle out of the truck quick enough to be in because as soon as you're dropped off on the stand then you're live to go. So it's, uh, it really does just kick off as soon as you start. We're here for four hours I think, so hopefully we'll, we'll stand a good chance. But we can be, we've got distances out here that we're shooting out to about 250 metres or we can shoot out to 250, 300 metres. So what I'm going to do is we're just going to take the, the GeoVids, have a quick scan through, just get some ranges. We set the rifles up yesterday and we've set out the program with the GeoVid system on uh, the click values of the scope. So it gives us a click value in the, uh, the front of the um, GeoVid so we'll click it, get the range and then if it is a bit, a bit of a way out then we can click it in. Because we're on a Monterey, apparently it's not the same as some of the driven hunting where pretty much as everything's on the, on the run and on the move, they might just, because we're hunting over such a fast area, the animals might just come through and start mooching and stop, mooch and stop, mooch and stop. So it may just give us that time element to be able to just click in the adjustment and take a more accurate shot. Oh, it's beautiful to see. So we've just got a, a vulture flying across over there. And especially now because vultures are in so much trouble through uh, diclofenac. Diclofenac is a, um, an anti-inflammatory uh, that is um, given to cattle. And what happens is it stays in the, the cattle system. If the cattle die and the vultures come down and feed, in, feed on it, it's absolutely lethal to them. So we've, um, we've lost over 90% of our vultures worldwide. Uh, so yeah, to actually have the privilege of seeing vultures flying around still is wonderful. three deer come down and come across but we've been specifically told not to shoot hinds with calves so just to be safe rather than sorry because I couldn't tell precisely which female had the calf so uh, we just left them too but at least we've had a better of an opportunity and that really looked at them superb as they were coming through there. I'm not dressed like this for the sake of it we're in a, a positive pressure room and obviously dust needs to be kept out the ladies are working along, putting everything together on the Magnus scopes, doing a little bit of hammer testing on them, just making sure everything's in line. And this is a culmination of about 250 parts, I think 11 or 12 lenses, um, they were saying on average go into the scopes depending on which model they are. And when you see the man hours and the, the time that actually goes into the production, it really does go to show why you do invest in quality optics. Unfortunately, we didn't get a chance on the, uh, the drives that we had um, this morning. So what we're going to do this afternoon, because we've still got a little bit of time left in Portugal, we're going to go out um, and do an evening stalk and just see what we can catch up with. Yeah, yeah. After going through the process and seeing the factory production and having the kit in your hands, it would just, it would just be a travesty not to go out and give it your best shot at trying to get something. It was a good hit and we saw the, the stag run so we just need to get in there now and uh, try and find them but again in conditions like this we haven't got a, uh, a dog although they've got dogs back at the farm so if we need to I'm sure we can uh, go and get one but hopefully we can get on the blood spore quickly and follow it up. So we've got good blood here we've just got to follow it up through but again tracking in a, a different environment is very very interesting you know you've just uh, 
again, just follow the same principles. Go to where the strike point is, pick up the blood, and follow the spore through. So hopefully we'll find the beastie at the end of it. It's the end of a very, very long day, and we finally got a stag at the end of the day with a bit of stalking and uh, a bit of running through. So it doesn't get any better than that. But uh, what a glorious way to remember Portugal! And again, it was just great using the, the equipment from Leica that we've been watched it being made, watched it getting put together, seeing the finished product, and then actually managed to get out with it and use it in the field. It has just been superb. Incredibly Roy delivering the goods whilst making a hairnet look cool. Now someone else who's no stranger to the hairdressing industry, it's David on the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Channel News. Have you ever fallen off out hunting? If so, you could win some champagne. For the third consecutive year, the National Hunt Tumblers Club competition invites photos of falls taken during the past hunting season. Sponsored by Champagne Paul Roger and the Countryside Alliance, it's open to entries until the 1st of March 2017. Field Sports Channel has been making headlines in the national press. It started with both the Mirror and the Mail online, running our story and of course our footage of Roy's Goldie in Scotland. And then last week the Evening Standard ran the story about Alfie being shot in the pigeon hide. Scottish shooters are reeling, but not to music. They've been slapped with two pieces of bad news in the last week. In one, the Scottish Government has brought forward plans to tax shoots. In the other, the Scottish Government plans to licence shooters. So what's the going rate for a stoat? £250,000 apparently. The Orkney Stoat Eradication Project has reported its results. Two stoats caught for half a million quid. 52 volunteers were trained and issued with Magnum Body Grips traps with wooden or metal mesh tunnels. None of them caught a stoat. An image of a dead feral cat in a trap has led to death threats for one pest controller. Sam Wood from Wisconsin, USA says that since putting the photo on social media, he has become the target of cyberbullying and death threats. The stock photo he posted, which showed a cat caught in a spring trap, drew thousands of commenters to his Facebook page. And finally, what happens when you shoot a 50 cal at bulletproof glass? All right, YouTuber Edwin Sarkisian finds out in this film, which has gone viral. As you'd expect, the bullet goes straight through. You are now to date with Field Sports Channel News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. Thank you, David. Now, while filming the other day with Paul Childerly in preparation for the launch of a new Zeiss product, all will be revealed, Paul took time out in the chiller to show how to prepare a Chinese water deer cape for the taxidermist. OK, so what we're going to do is uh, cape out this young buck. It's quite handy to have a few spare capes. It's a little bit damaged at the front, but we'll still cape out anyway. And I'll go through sort of what I do for caping, which suits me best for the caping. And I've never had any complaints from any taxidermists, so I think it like, works for them as well. So hopefully it'll all go, go to plan. OK, so normally go up the front line of the legs just on where the hair changes colour. And then up the long, the rough line, you've got the two colours of the hair, the light hair and the light fawn hair. Up to where the sternum is, sternum's about there, just come above there, give them plenty to work with. Again, up through to the armpit, up the side. Obviously don't stick it in too much. Up to the side of that. And come over the top. That gives them a good front part of the shield then. And 
as we use a lot of the meat, um, you can see a few of the skin around here, and we're actually going to do a full skin, um, just because it's a young animal, perfect for eating. So again, we'll do a full skin on this one, like hot butter. <laughs> Super, super fan. Um, and just for the fact that it is what it says on the tin. Stay sharp, it's man enough for the job. It's not a massive looking blade, but I'd put it under some serious punishment and every time it comes through. But yeah, no, I have no complaints at all. Apart from which I had one about 10 years ago, <laughs> or 20 years ago. Honestly. Yeah, yeah, honestly. I mean, I've, I've had quite a lot of night, obviously doing the job I've done with my father all through the years. I've been a big fan of collecting knives and going through all the different makes of knives and a few custom builds. There are some good, good custom builds out there, don't get me wrong. But um, what's good for the job, you know? Yeah, and when I first used it, I was just amazed, you know, you could be leave a, a dirty knife in the sheath and it would come out a quick wash and it come back to uh, being fresh and new again. The base of that, what we're going to do is trying to break the ripping, the fat ripping, so you just smack against it and it stops it from pulling all this down right the way down the front end. What the actual taxidermists do, this is a bit of a hole in there, but which you can do as well. The taxidermists obviously stitch them up through the back here, um, behind the base of the uh, skull there, through to the side, top of the shoulders. That's their main stitch line. So you can basically come into behind the head here. Obviously, be careful on this one, and then just work down the back. Skull. Let's cut a bit of this fur off. And then we'll actually go over top of the head. And you can work on down, Let's actually get right up behind the ears. Be able to get to the atlas joint, which is obviously right at the base of the skull. Oops. You see that there? I'm not, no pressure at all. You know, that's, that's the classic thing. If you can't find the right area, it's no good hacking into the bone because you'll never get through. All it is just find the right spot not hardly touching it, going through. See, it's not hardly touching anything. There's no pressure needed. All the way around the meaty part first, and obviously you've got the, the yucky part. Off and done. And turn it inside out. There you got. Thank you, Paul, and we'll have more from him at Ewa in next week's show. Next up, let's go to the best of hunting and shooting on YouTube. It is Hunting YouTube. This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting and shooting videos that YouTube has to offer. It's billed as an unexpected journey, and it's got no hobbits. Viewer Richard Kavanagh sends in a charming tale about how Glen Farm Gun Club in County Leitrim in Ireland has brought back grouse to local hillsides. Lots of dreamy photography in McNabb Challenge 2016. The Field Magazine and Paul Roger Champagne turn the cameras on Harris in the Outer Hebrides. Six people, one day, but did they do it? The McNabb, that is. We went on the Zeiss Media Hunt in November 
Weber. In English, here's Ulrich Orskov's film about the driven hunting event in one of Germany's most productive forests, which Ulrich describes as fast food. The superb 260 Rips is back. Filmed back in November, he's on a farm in the south of England controlling foxes, which is what he does best. Meanwhile, Robin Foxer, admin of Facebook's Foxing That's All page, has put up a selection of foxing clips with a variety of night vision setups. 54 foxes shot. Here is a trailer for a thought-provoking documentary that shines light on the people, the land, and everything that lies behind the supermarket shelves. Filmed in New Zealand, meat is the modern story of the animals we eat and includes hunting. On the more sporting side of Waffenland TV is out after Mouflon in Slovenia. Glorious landscape and a good shot. And finally, one of America's biggest fishing channels, Lunkers TV, is hunting in Africa, showing fairly hopeless gun safety, but interesting filming. They are after planes game. That's it for this week. I've put all these films into a playlist for you. Click on the link or go to bit.ly slash hunting YouTube 379. If you have a YouTube film you would like us to pop into the weekly top eight, email me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Another lovely film on YouTube, our own Field Sports Africa is out this week. The South African dynamic duo Rich Leonard and Matt Dubber are in this month's episode of Field Sports Africa. They're controlling porcupines which dig up and chew through the drainage pipes on a permission, plus hairs for the pot. Click on the link on the screen to watch that. Or if you haven't done so already, go to our website where you can subscribe to us on YouTube, you can like us on Facebook, you can follow us on Twitter, or you can pop your email address into our register page and we'll contact you about this show, Field Sports Britain. It's out 7 pm UK time every Wednesday. And this has been Field Sports Britain. Good hunting, good shooting, good fishing, and goodbye. <laughs>